Who would be some of the best teams for the Ravens to contact to make a trade with for a running back? With all the current talk being about Baltimore looking at outside options to help at the running back position, could they actually promote somebody from within and Devin DuVernay to help take over? These and many, 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 many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got a man. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a team, keep it clean patron, go to patreon.com slash engraven vids. If not, that's fine too. Y'all know that either way. It's all love, man. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We got some really good questions, and hopefully we can get this in before Ravens decide to make that move at running back. Whoever it's going to be, we'll see. But let's do it. Now let's get started with our boy Phil. He said, uh, over the past week, our number one and number three running backs have gotten injured and they are out for the year. I need your thoughts on this. Instead of signing Le'Veon Bell, who hasn't done a thing for the past five years except being waived by the Jets after two seasons due to how he hesitates and is slow out of the backfield, which doesn't match our style, then you have Freeman. Now I understand your point from your current video, but he has been waived by the Giants and New Orleans over the past two years. My question is, if you were EDC, would you consider contacting Seattle, who have five Five running backs on their roster right now who are young in training camp shape and ready to go now Seattle will keep Carson Collins Alex Collins shout out to Alex Collins by the way and Dallas but probably you would be willing to trade either Rashad Penny or Homer for a fifth or sixth rounder because at this time we have nine draft picks for the 2022 draft so tell me your thoughts in Graven um you could do that but I just I don't even feel like it's like necessary that you, you 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 trade a draft pick. You trade a draft pick for somebody who would just end up being like a third running back. Like you you got options out there. And say say for instance you sign Le'Veon Bell. Say for instance you sign uh Devontae Freeman. Say for instance you sign Todd Gurley. And I'm just using those names as examples. But say for instance you sign one of those guys, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. Okay, you you ain't give up nothing but a little bit of cap space to get them. But if you have to trade away a, uh, a a draft pick for and if it's a low draft pick, okay, whatever, no big deal. If it doesn't work out, okay, no problem. But if you have to trade, like once you start getting into the the fourths and the fifths, you, you gotta you gotta consider the the pros and the cons, and you gotta weigh like what really matters. Should we really be? Trading away a draft pick for somebody who's going to be a third running back uh, and a possible special teamer. I don't even think it's a necessity or a uh, it's a given that this third running back is going to be a special teamer. Usually they are, but depending on who they sign, they may not be. So I would just like, again, I would just rather sign one of the vet guys. And then you could put um, Holyfield. You put Holyfield on a practice squad so you can develop him, work on developing his game. Because, you know, Ravens, that's one thing they know how to develop is some running backs. Ravens, they, they will pick a running back up out of nowhere, and they'll have that boy running for like six, seven, eight hundred 800 yards, man. Um, so that's what I would rather do than um, start thinking about giving up draft picks uh, just to – get a running back next question came from my boy raven pride he said what's up in graven uh, like always your boy loves being part of team keep it clean family i see the other day carter was shining on the channel and i thought that was all right hey appreciate it man carter yeah he he loves y'all team keep it clean so shout out to carter man he said now my question is i believe that the ravens can survive the first four weeks of the season without bateman and just for the sake of it go two and two that will still put them in a good position now what's your take on it and i just want to give a shout out to all the team keep it clean family again for all their prayers when I was sick. And again, if you think the Ravens are down and out, they will shock the world without a doubt. So shout out to the Rhymes right there too. Um, and yeah, we all, we definitely glad that you're doing better uh, and a lot better. You back on the road again driving. So yeah, man, we, we proud of you. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they got no choice but to survive without Rashad Bateman. So it's like... <laughs> And even when he does come back, it ain't like he's going to come back. Oh, yeah, hey, I'm here. I'm the starter. He's going to be eased back in here and there. 
Um, but with them, they got what the they got the Raiders, they got the Chiefs, uh, and I think the Lions and Broncos. I think that's the first four weeks of the season. But with that being said, they they do have some tough opponents, some tough matchups and whatnot. But the thing about it is that. Rashad Bateman, I think he'll definitely make them better once he does come back. But right now, they, they already know what life is like without Rashad Bateman. So with him being out, they're just going to be back to that life. Uh, but when he comes back, again, that, it'll be a whole brand new life, a brand new offense. And just it'll be nice just to really see what this guy can do. Because we heard all the, the, the training camp and practice hype, and we loved it. But we want to see it on the field, too. And we were so close to getting it, but it got taken away from us. But at least it's only temporary. Next question came from my boy, Harry H. He said, who do you think the Ravens should pick up as their running back? Right now, I think they should sign Duke Johnson because he has better hands, uh, in my opinion, than Justice Hill. Or if they want a strong runner, maybe Rodney Anderson. If they want a mixture of both, maybe carry on Johnson. Just wondering what you and team keep it clean think about this one. Mm. So, yes, uh, running back is on a lot of our minds right now uh, because of the situation that's going on. Um, we've talked about the Le'Veon Bells. Uh, we've talked about uh, the Devontae Freemans, and we'll see if Ravens end up signing one of them. But some un unsung heroes, uh, and again, remember, third running backs, they're not going to be the first option. They wouldn't be the second option. But some guys who have been first options over their career and that could come in and just contribute. Some names that we haven't really been talking about too much. Frank Gore, who has played in this offense before. Downhill guy. Is he burning anybody? No. Is he playing special teams? No. But, again, just an option, a third, third option. Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is a name that is very, very intriguing. And I was reminded of this name by my guy uh, Chris from Chris Sports Corner. Shout out to him. Y'all check out his channel if you need to. He's a Cowboys fan, by the way, uh, but he's, he's a Ravens fan, too. I know he is. Uh, but Adrian Peterson will be a very intriguing name uh, because we know he definitely makes quick decisions. Um, he's somebody that can come in and just help the room be that much better. Uh, and not even just with his play, but with his knowledge of the game because we, we know like he definitely was one of the best running backs in the league for a long time when he was on the Vikings. And when they cut him, it was crazy. Because I just never saw that happening. I was like, nah, Adrian Peterson, he ain't never going nowhere. He ain't never leaving the Vikings. But they did it. So that would just be another name to possibly consider. Um, obviously, Bell, Freeman, those guys are younger. Um, but, there, again, there's plenty of running backs' names out there floating around. So just something to think about. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, Engraven, hope you're doing well. Dug up a few names that I thought would be good trade candidates for the Ravens to target. Anyone? Josh Kelly from the Chargers. Marlon Mack from the Colts. Ooh, you think they will part with him? And then have to see him in week five on Monday Night Football? I don't, I don't think so. But yeah, you never know. Rex Burkhead from the Texans. Oh, they got like 80 running backs over there right now. Shout out to Mark Ingram, by the way. Um, LaMichael Perrine from the Jets. James White from the Pats. Ooh, nice pass catching running back. Uh, special teams guy. Uh, yeah, ooh, that, that would be a sneaky good one. That would be a sneaky good pickup for the Ravens. Would the Patriots be willing to part ways with him? I don't know, but I like that one the most so far. Oh, or Matt Breida from the Bills. Mm, I didn't even know he was on the Bills. I thought he was still on the Dolphins. Shows goes to show how much I know. Uh, sound particularly good to you. They're all on teams with heavy running back depth and not listed as starters for their respective teams. Not gonna lie, I don't think any of the free agent backs can help us very much. <laughs> and we have five, yes, five fourth round picks next year that are looking real tradable at the moment. Thanks for your time. And just like Frank uh, Abagnale Jr., I'm out. I don't know who that is. Um, but yeah, my favorite on that list. Uh, would be, yeah, James White. Because, again, there, there's a special teams value, uh, but more so him helping in the passing game. Marlon Mack, I think he'll be another good one too, but I just don't see Colts uh, coming up off of him. But, yeah, I, I, I like this list, and I appreciate you coming up with it. Now sort of shifting gears a little bit, this next question came from Jaquan. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate you, Jaquan. He said, so is it just me, or is this the longest week ever? Nah, it's just you. I, things have been busy like crazy, um, so I'm enjoying it 
taking his time. I'm in no rush. I'm looking forward to the game now, but I'm in no rush. But anyway, he said, with that being said, who do you think will be a breakout player uh, this first game and into the season? Also, do you think this is a must-win game? Against the Raiders, no, it's, it's not a must-win game. But you want to start your season off right. The, this, it, it's impossible for this to be a must-win game because it's literally the first game of the season. If you go 0-1, okay, you could go 16-1. and You can go 15-2. and So, no, this is definitely not a must-win game. But as far as breakout player... Um, breakout player, I would say, mm, if if he could get the opportunity, I would say Dalen Hayes. It all just depends on the opportunity, though. Um, but another guy that I could see breaking out, uh, maybe Duvernay. Maybe Duvernay. Um, because I can't really say Hollywood, because Hollywood done broken out already. He hasn't reached his full, full potential yet. Um, but I would say Duvernay because I expect Duvernay to get a, a, a lot of opportunities this year, and especially week one with, with Bateman being out, with Boykin being out. Duvernay is going to be out there. Um, so I will say number 13. Next question came from my boy Thomas M. He said, good afternoon. Good afternoon. He said, the practice squad rules have undergone some major changes in the last couple of years. They certainly have. Uh, one of those changes is that teams can now protect up to four players from being claimed. And that list of four is subject to change every week. My four guys would be Verity, McSorley, Levine, and Justin Ellis. Now, here's the question. Which four practice squad players would you protect and why? Looking forward to another great Raven season and good vibes with Team Keep It Clean. Appreciate it, Thomas, and thank you for uh, just you support like crazy. Uh, I know we done had a lot of conversations on the side, too, uh, so I appreciate you a lot, man. Uh, thank you for being a mod on the channel, too, always holding that down, so I, I appreciate it. Um, now, which four guys would I protect right now? Um, that's a really good question. One would be... Um, Bynes, Josh Bynes, because he's on a practice squad. Uh, I would protect him just for that safety net at linebacker as a just-in-case guy. Like, okay, just in case. Man, we, we just want to have this guy ready, stay ready, so we ain't got to get ready. He knows our system. He knows our defense. Let's keep him. One of your guys that you mentioned, uh, Anthony Levine. Anthony Levine, same exact reason. He knows the system. He knows special teams. He can come in and play defense if need be. So that would be another one. Right now, uh, Benjamin Victor will probably be another one, too. Reason being, because uh, with Watkins, we know his history. Uh, with Hollywood, he just got back. Um, so hopefully, he's 100%. Hopefully, both of those guys are 100%. But with, with wide receivers right now, it's been rough injury-wise. Bateman's out. Boykin is out. Um, Duvernay and Prochet, they've been healthy. Uh, Tylen Wallace, him as well. Uh, but we just... We don't have much depth right now at the wide receiver position, uh, and we, we just don't have much health. Uh, so Benjamin Victor will be another one. Uh, the fourth guy, no, I, I wouldn't protect Verity. Trace McSorley, mm, no, not Trace McSorley either. Huh, I can't even think of a fourth guy. So what I might do for the fourth guy, I might just put all the practice squad players' names in a hat. And then just pick one, and that would be it. Next question came from T804. Why, it's been a little minute. He said, what's up, Engraven? It's been a minute. I hope you and the family and rest of the team keep it clean have been doing well. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate you. I had some quick questions I wanted to get your viewpoint on. Like always, I appreciate your thoughts. I appreciate you even sending the questions, man. Thank you. Week 17 with the season uh, that you think the Ravens will have, do you think the Week 17 game will have any major implications or would it just be a game for the starters to sit out? I'm just thinking about what an extra week would do to a team. Injuries, more room for losing a game, etc. Or uh, more time to just continue to stay in whatever rhythm that you're currently in as you head into the playoffs. I don't envision the Ravens um, sitting the starters uh, for the week 17 game against the Rams um, or will it be actually week 18 it's 17 games so 18 weeks because it's still one bye week but I don't I don't envision them sitting the starters even if they're in a position where oh yeah we got the number one seed well, and it's only one one team that gets the bye week in the playoffs it ain't two teams anymore they changed that what two years ago I think but either way um, I don't uh, I don't even envision them getting that that number one overall seed anyway it'd be nice but I, I don't see it happening It'd be, it, I would love for them to prove me wrong, but we just got to wait it out and see. Um, but uh, I I think Ravens will definitely be in the playoffs. But at the same time, with it being 17 games, man, um, you just never know. 
Uh, Cause we saw last year with the Ravens and the Browns and the Steelers, it was crazy and it came right down to it. To the last couple of games, Ravens had to win out. Um, Steelers and Browns, they both made it too. So three teams from the AFC North made the playoffs last year. So every game counts that much more. Um, hopefully Ravens will position themselves where we don't have to stress out at the end of the season, even though it's still fun. But at the same time, we, we wouldn't mind not stressing out and where we could be like, all right, hey, hey, them Ravens, they in the playoffs already, so we ain't even got to worry about it that much. Uh, but you just never know with this team, man. And he said number two, uh, the pass game. Last year, I was hoping that the Ravens would add more passing concepts to the playbook with the additions of Bateman, Watkins, and Wallace. Do you think they will make a jump in that direction? Yeah, but not even because of the additions at the wide receiver position, but with the wide receiver coaches. I think that has been probably the Ravens' biggest addition uh, this offseason and the one that's going to make the most noise. Next question came from my boy, King of Pugo. I appreciate you, man. My guy always coming through comments and the live streams, all that stuff. So shout out to you. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope this message finds you and your family well. Last email I sent was right after the loss to the Bills, and obviously emotions were high. I said we never win anything with Greg Roman. As much as I wish I'll be proven wrong, I can't lie and say I feel any different. Believe me when I say I pray that I'm proven to be wrong. We shall see. Here are my predictions for this upcoming season. We go 13-4. and four. Okay, I had them 12-5, and five, so we're close on that. But hopefully they prove both of us wrong and go even better. But anyway, he said we go 13-4 and four and make it to the AFC Championship game, much like you predicted. Oh, <laughs> shout out to my guy. I believe that we fall in that game to the Kansas City Chiefs because we will beat them week two and it'll probably be a revenge game in Arrowhead that'll make the difference. I predict that game that Giro will revert to past tactics as well as Hobbs, and we will look like a completely different team like in all of our past playoff games. For the last time, I repeat, I hope this doesn't actually happen and we go on to win it all, but I must be realistic and try to be as objective and level-headed as possible. Appreciate you taking the time to read this. Silly season is over and football is back. I love you, bro. Keep doing your thing. Can't wait for the live streams. I, I appreciate you, man. Um, that has been my same thing, uh, my same sort of prediction for this Ravens uh, this year, that they go to the AFC Championship game. Um, but hopefully, like you, like you said, I've said the same thing too. Hopefully, they prove us wrong. Hopefully, they prove us all the way wrong. And, and, and hopefully, we could have this conversation where we're looking back like, man, I've never been more glad to be wrong about this Ravens team ever because 2019, they had it. 2020, they had it. This year, they got it. And what they have is a roster that is enough. It's enough. Is it the best roster in the world? No. Do they have all the best receivers in the world? No. I mean, the average receivers ain't even healthy right now. But Ravens have enough right now to get the job done. Now, it's, it's, up to, it's up to the players to execute, but it's up to the coaching staff to really put these guys in positions to where you can play them to their strengths. Please. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, shout out from Mexico. I see that many people are panicking that we don't have Rashad Bateman for the first few games, but I say chill. We already have another, or should I say other Rashad Batemans? Uh, we saw what Proche and Wallace are capable of in the preseason, and I expect Harbaugh to use them early on in the in Bateman spot until we can get our wide receiver healthy. With both of them on the outside, numbers mossing those cornerbacks, Lamar's passing abilities will skyrocket for sure. And we can all rewatch it with detail in those Simply vids that are fire. Shout out to Simply AS10. Stay safe and let's hope that Joe Nubo gets signed by the Ravens as a linebacker. LOL. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Nubo too. Shout out to Ravens YouTube, man. Um, now, well, yeah, we uh we hope they get those opportunities. And with Tylen Wallace and Proche, what we were talking about in the last question, that we hope that the Ravens use these guys to and play them to their strengths. Those are some jump ball guys. Proche and Wallace, those are some jump ball guys. They are some very physical wide receivers. So to get them involved in those jump balls, Lamar, he's going to have to trust him. He will really have to trust him. Uh, so that will take a lot for him. That will take a lot with Greg Roman and them. Uh, and, just, and not even just jump balls, but just to get those guys involved, period. Uh, so And they're going to be called upon a little more these first couple of weeks, again, since Bateman and Boykin are both out. So 
they gonna have to step up. Next question came from Ray. She said, which one of the wide receivers that we have will make an immediate impact in week one against the Raiders? I personally think it'll be Sammy Watkins because he's played against the Raiders and produced against them multiple times. Now, I mean, it, it could be any of them, but I think with Sammy Watkins, I think he will have one of the biggest impacts on the Ravens because he can open it up for everybody else. Because Hollywood, I think he'll do his thing, Mark Andrews to DuVernay. But with Sammy Watkins, we'll have a guy that teams respect and they, they could sleep on everybody else. But with, with them respecting him so much and them sleeping on everybody else, everybody else who they sleeping on, they could give him a nice little wake up call. Uh, and yeah, Ray also had another question. Said, keep up the good content. I got to face you in Madden 22. I play on Xbox One and PS5. Oh, you ain't playing. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to run that sometime. But, yeah, I I'm with it. I'm on Xbox uh, Series S, whatever it's called. Uh, so, let me know. Now, these last two questions, y'all sent them to the wrong email. But, A, I still got love for y'all. And since we're in a great mood, we're going to run these questions anyway. So, first one came from my boy, Fox. Oh, shout out to my guy Fox, man. He said, uh, huge, 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 huge fan. You already know. Appreciate you, man. Help me, please, because all I'm seeing from the Ben Mason deal is a big waste of a fifth round pick. Yes, he was brought in to hold weight over our guy, but come on, man. Now he's practicing for the enemy. How do you mess that kind of stuff up? Help me understand better. Uh, so yeah, uh, not, I mean, the best way to put that, every draft pick doesn't always work out. Something that I've been thinking about, um, and, Obviously, Madden is not real life, but a lot of times with Madden, you can relate it to stuff that happens in real life with the way you operate. Every franchise mode, my c career mode, yeah, franchise mode, CFM, there it goes. Um, I will try to, I'll, I'll go through the season, build up these players, and me, I don't know if it's because I'm a Ravens fan, but me as a GM on Madden, I am very, very cheap. Very cheap. I do, I hardly ever give out second contracts. Um, you got to like be absolutely killing it for and like, and, and I, I really got to think about it. I do not like giving out second contracts. What I do a lot of the times, if somebody's coming up on their second contract, no matter what position, I trade them away for a full first round pick. Start over, build up that cap room. Because I do like going in free agency. I love being able to have uh, my say on who I want to give a nice bid to, who, who want to give a nice offer to, to try to sign them. But I, I do not like giving out second contracts. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I blame the Ravens for that thinking on that. But anyway, with the draft, I try to get um, as many draft picks as I possibly can. I try to stack up on, on as many first round draft picks as I can and early draft picks. So once I get a certain amount of draft picks or whatever, I trade away uh, as many players as I possibly can. But at the same time, keep some really good players too. What I'll do when, when I'm going into the draft I'll pay heavy attention to the first round because I got usually got multiple picks there. Second round, third round. Then fourth round, I start to get kind of like, ah, oh, whatever. If this guy works out, cool. If not, uh, oh, well, no big deal. And then the fifth round is even lower. If this guy works out, okay, cool. If he doesn't, uh, whatever. I ain't worried about it. And definitely for the six and seven. And usually, I just, I just try to trade away the six and seven picks um, unless I'm trying to get a kick or something like that. Uh, so what I say when I say all of that is that maybe the Ravens, since they had a, a decent amount of draft picks, maybe when they got to the fifth round, maybe they were like, hey, if these guys work out, cool. But if they don't, uh, it is what it is. We're we just going to move on. Um, because with the draft, you can't hit on everybody. And maybe the, the Ravens were just taking some shots in the dark uh, when they picked Sean Wade, when they picked Ben Mason, even when they picked Dalen Hayes. Uh, maybe they just, these weren't guys that they were really all that interested in, but they were just like, you know what? If it works, great. If it doesn't work, okay, it is what it is. We, we're not going to sweat it. So I think that might have been their approach and their mentality when they selected those guys. And the last question on this episode of NFL Question from subscribers came from my boy Jamel. He said, hey, what's good, Engraver? What's good, Jamel? He said, it's been a while since I sent a question from subscribers, but I hope you and the fam are doing well. Just a crazy thought that I had. Do you think the Ravens can use Devin DuVernay as a third down back? Now, we know he's valuable as a wide receiver for us, but the Ravens use him a lot on jet sweeps. I think it will be a good look using him as a third down back out of the backfield. He did play running back in high school, plus this gives the Ravens a deadly weapon on third down. Think of this, Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown, Watkins, Prochet, DuVernay, Andrews, and Bateman or Boykin whenever they return 
all on the field at the same time. Name me a defense that could stop that if G-Row could scheme something up with our new, our new wide receiver coaches. Uh, just a thought. What do you think? Keep up the great work, and as always, keep it clean. Ooh, that's a fun one right there. What a way to uh, end off this episode of NFL Question from subscribers. I love it. Um, Duvernay, he's built like a running back. I remember when we first drafted him, when I looked at him, I was like, oh, yeah, this dude, he's built like a running back. He low to the ground. He's like a little pit bull. Uh, he's stocky. He got some nice speed, too. And he got good hands. So I, I, I wouldn't mind if they did that. I would not mind if they did that at all because initially you may think, what, Duvernay, what, that's our wide receiver, that's crazy, man. But then when you really think about it, it's like, hold up. As crazy as it sounds, it doesn't really sound that crazy because he could do it. De De Devin Duvernay, he's physical, very physical, and yeah, he was the jet sweep king, so they were using him like a running back already last year because they, oh, send Devin Duvernay in motion. Hey, yo, here comes the jet sweep. What the Ravens do? The jet sweep. So, shout out to Devin Duvernay, who was, again, the jet sweep king last year. Kick returner, punt returner. So, with him playing all these different roles with the Ravens offense last year, why not add another role to it? And, yeah, use him like that. that is, I love this. I was actually talking to my guy, uh, Camry, about this a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to my guy, JT, about it a couple weeks ago as well, actually on consecutive days. But um, that that is not, like, that's not too far-fetched to think of, like, seriously to think about it. Devin DuVernay, as a third-down running back, as a running back, period. I think he could do it, especially if they gave him opportunities in space. But you line him up back there, like you line him up next to Lamar, you give him a screen or something, because again, you know they run one screen a month. You give him that one screen per month, oh, nice. You send him on some routes out of the backfield, and then the thing with that too, he yeah, his route running, it, it does need to get a little bit better, but that they brought in them coaches. They brought in uh, T. Martin and Keith Will. They brought in those guys. So And, and those guys were working with the not only the receivers, but the running backs as well. But with him as a receiver, with his route running, they usually work on route running a bit more than the running backs do. So he, he will specialize in that already, and he could use that and implement that in his game as a running back too, so that could help. But it would sort of be like having like, like almost a, a Madden or something like that, a Madden roster back there where you edited the roster and put one of the wide receivers that running. Oh, I, I like that, man. This was a beautiful way to end off questions from subscribers. Shout out to Graven.